So it's, uh, it's amazing to see that. It's amazing to see the expectation. And sometimes your expectation happens even when you're, you know, you've been through the service, you're expecting something to happen, but then you got to take that little step of faith. Amen. Okay. So I'm in the pastor's office, I'm resting, and they're really good at just like, everybody wants a piece to talk to you and stuff. And I don't mind, I love talking to people, but they go, no, you need to rest. We got another service, you need to rest. So they took me to their office, had fruit for me and little snacks and I'm just drinking. I really just want water when I'm done. I just want water and then find the closest bathroom. That's what I usually all I need to do. And I'm in there sitting down, and this lady comes in, and her name was Irene. And that's my wife's name, too. And she goes, uh, Sister Irene, we're just visiting with, with, with Brother right now. Which we don't really, it's just us and the, and the pastor. Is that okay? And she goes, Well, normally it would be. And she locks the door. I'm like, Okay, because he has a bodyguard, evidently, that has a gun and follows the pastor, but he wasn't in the room with us. And I'm like, cool, oh, goodness. She goes, I understand this man's a man of faith, and my faith is expecting, but my knee didn't get healed. And she walks real slowly to me, and she goes, Pastor David? I go, yes, ma'am. You will not leave this room until my leg is healed. I was like, I'm like well, I really got to go to the bathroom, so I appreciate that, so... Give me, give me your leg. <laughs> and Pastor Gary's like, David, I'm being honest. I gotta go. <laughs> so I put my hat on her leg. And I just said, and she goes, looks at it. And I go, I don't hear the popping. I go, you don't always have to hear the popping. Do you know there's a popping? There's a noise. Because let me tell you this. Faith has a sound. Yeah. Elijah said, he didn't see it. He said, I hear the abundance of rain. Because if it comes from the supernatural heaven, and it comes into the natural, our realm that we're living in, there's a sonic boom like a plane flying boom, when it enters. So I hear popping. I hear cracking. I hear bones cracking all the time. I hear something coming when I'm praying. I can't explain it to you. I think my spiritual ear is more open than my spiritual eye. I'm kind of glad because there's some things you don't want to see. <laughs> because my eyes open up and I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I told that lady, just do that. She goes, I haven't done that in a long time. I go, put your hand on my shoulder and do it by faith. And she went like that. And she goes, all right, you can leave. I'm healed. She walked right out the door. <laughs> but God is good. But sometimes you have to seize your moment of faith. I was in India traveling, and I preached at this church. And my translator, it was, I was in Chattisgarh, which is outside my, my, my visa. But we snuck in to preach. And we went and prayed and stuff. And I served a ministry in India for 14, for five years and then sold for 14. So I've had a lot of work in India that I know that I was harvesting. And I was going everywhere. And God blessed us. So the translator said, it's time for prayer. And then all of a sudden, I didn't see him anymore. And everybody rushed me in the small church. I was crowded by people. I mean, I have the picture of I'm like, these people are small. <laughs> like this. So if I move my elbow, I'm going to knock someone out. So I'm like picking my hands up saying, Lord, how do I get it? I was about to just pray my way out of it. <laughs> but I'm like, Lord, there's no one to catch them. And I'm like, oh, man. So all of a sudden, I see uh, like the, the sea parting. And it's the grandmother of the church. And she's swinging her purse. Whack. Whack. And people are running and running as she's coming to me. I'm like, oh, cool. She's coming to rescue me. <laughs> she comes in front of me. And she looks at me and she smiles. And I'm ready, getting ready to get hit. I'm like, okay. And she points to her ears. I go, oh, she's deaf. So I put my hands on her ears. I said, Lord, hear her. Touch her. In faith. Touch her. In faith. Instantly, God healed her. And I'm, she's excited. She's screaming and everything. And then the little translator, the little small guy comes up. I'm like, yeah, where you been? <laughs> he goes, oh, I had to get some water. I'm like, whatever, dude. I go, hey, this woman's healed. What? That's my grandmother. Well, that's your grandmother? Well, she's healed. No, man, she's been deaf since I was a little kid. I go, dude, she's healed. And he's arguing with me that she's not healed. And I, then I could just, glad I hear that, have that hearing. I could hear that purse coming. And I just step back. Whoo, whacks her grandson once, two, three, four times. She goes, I'm healed. I'm healed. <laughs> no, you don't. I've learned that. <laughs> so you see miracles like that. Amen. You see that. And if you look at what Jesus did, I love the, the different translations, although I'm a King James boy. I love the different translations of the Bible. And I've, I've read so many translations, I can't reference each one of them, but it said they threw them down. It said they laid them down. It said with all hope, they put them down. 
They threw them at the feet of Jesus, laid them at the feet of Jesus, believing with expectation that Jesus would heal. And the Bible said he healed them all. Come on. He healed them all. I'm grateful to see so many people healed in the services. But where does this, this compare to what the Lord does and to what the Lord did? Remember what the Word of God says. If everything was written that Jesus had did, Amen. there would be not enough books to contain it. I understand that, and I'm not even an inkling to what Jesus is. I'm not even an ounce to what Jesus is. I understand that because I get testimonies after testimonies after testimonies testimonies and I got to write them down I got to record them because I'm not going to remember and that's just the ones that came back that's just the ones that came and talked to me to say this is what happened or I never get any reports even though I asked the pastors to send me the testimonies I never get them but I understand because even with what I do I can't keep up with it isn't that God isn't that what God does I'm believing expectation is here today amen Hi, this is David Yannis, and I want to thank you so much for listening to our broadcast. Today I want to offer you some very special collections of books that are mine personally that I want to give to you. I want to offer you Ignite Your Faith, the book that has been all over the world and has touched people all over the world. It's about healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm also going to offer you the CD, Ignite Your Faith, which is not an audio book, but three healing services. These healing services have been anointed, blessed, and recorded them in Sid Ross Studios. And many people have been blessed with testimonies of deliverance and healing. And I'm also going to offer you The Recruit and Almost Out of Grace, my other two books. These are my first two books. Uh, the Recruit's about me when I was in the military and about divine revelation of miracles and healing while I was in there, intervention by God. And Almost Out of Grace is a book about relationships. And both men and women have been so blessed with it that it's touched their lives. We're going to offer this offer. It's called Ignite, offer number 148. For $50 or more. For $50 or more, we're going to send you all four products. You're going to be blessed with them. You're going to be encouraged with them. And most of all, you're going to help move this ministry forward. God bless you. Remember, you can go to our special website. You can go to give us a call or you can write us. Give us a call. Go to our special website or write us. Include, if you write or call, mention 148 or write down 148 Ignite so we know which packs to send you. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast. I want to welcome you to Pure Fire School of Ministry, a place where you're going to be inspired in faith and a place where God is going to teach you something that you need to know from the Word of God. I put together several, several ministers, evangelists, uh, pastors, prophets, and we put them together to teach a subject that they are strongly suited for to get it into your spirit and your soul. Um, you can take it online and you can take it at your own pace. You can take one course or you can take all the courses. It's completely up to you. And what my goal is, is to inspire your faith through the teachings of great women and men of God and to make it accessible and affordable. If you go to our school, you'll see that it's affordable for anyone, whatever part of the world you live on, to be able to take it in. And I really believe that Pure Fire School of Ministry will challenge you and get you motivated to do something for God. Hi, this is David Gannis. I want to invite you to one of our healing services. Please visit our website, find out more details. But we have services all over the United States and literally all over the world. We have gone through South Africa, Kenya, India, Mexico, Peru. We are all over the United States, from Los Angeles to Florida, all the way up to Nashville to Wisconsin, all the way down to Texas. We have several services in Texas. Louisiana, we've been there, and we're going back. Nashville, we've been there, and we're going back. Hawaii, we're going back. I want you to go to our website. Find some place that you can get to so we can pray for you. If you can't make it, just believe. Send me a prayer request. I will try my best to answer you. I do text back. I do email back. I do make phone calls back. I do write back. So if you write me personally, call me. I will try my best to get back to you. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching our broadcast. Remember, go to our website to find out more details about our healing services. God bless you. I believe that God is able to move and change and do the things that we've been expecting him to do. I know that I've been to several places to preach, and there's, there's probably like five or six cities that I've actually went to where the expectation level was extremely high. Well, when I walked in, miracles happened. I'm traveling to San Diego. Our GPS is saying it's going to take us six hours to get to San Diego from Los Angeles. I'm like hitting the stupid phone. I'm like, no way. It's only a two-hour drive. How's it six hours? But the traffic. 
And then my friends, they're a bit older, they're retired, and uh, I'm being kind. <laughs> They like to stop at Costco's on the way. I'm like, we ain't got time to stop at Costco's, people. They want to get a hot dog and fill up the gas. And I'm like, it's only a quarter low. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we get to San Diego with that. And then they go do their walk around at Costco's. I'm like, we got to get on the road. And in L.A. on a sunny day, and the first sunny day in L.A., on the 405, it is a parking lot. I know that. I've lived there. And I'm like, no, you're not going to get anywhere. Six hours. I'm supposed to preach in three so I send a blast out to all my, my, all my prayer partners, and I'm going to include you as my prayer partner now, Mary. I'll send you a blast as well. And I only send a blast to people I know can, that know how to talk to God and know that they spend time with God. I have thousands of friends, but I only send it to a short handful because I know that they can intercede and they can take it to God. And I had so many people responding and praying for me. I said, look, i got to preach in three hours. My GPS is saying six. Can y'all pray that this traffic dies? And then, I, and then it was when Pastor Jack Wells from Louisiana. I could just hear his voice. He got that great Louisiana. He goes, boy, don't worry. You got to preach. <laughs> the devil knows it, and he's trying to stop him. The devil can't stop Jesus. He didn't stop him then. He ain't going to stop him now. You'll be there on time, boy. Don't you worry. I read that. I said, yes, Lord, I'll be fine. I, my peace was there. I seen that thing go from red to yellow, little line, right, you know, the GPS, and then turn green. We got there five minutes before I'm supposed to go be there. I've worn this shirt, oh, and I said, no, I switched to this shirt real quick and grabbed my one, a jacket, one jeans and everything, walked into the church. Saturday night. Now, let me tell you about this. I already rented a place. I, I go places that God sends me. I rent, like, uh, conference rooms and hotels and stuff if a church is not available until God brings me a church. I have a church in Los Angeles that I can have services any time I want now. Amen. But it took three times renting before that happened. I have churches in Greenville, South Carolina, that they said, anytime you come, you just tell us. But I had to rent three times before that happened. I have churches in Tennessee that say, anytime you need to use our building, just let us know. We'll hold the service for you. You don't owe us anything. In fact, I tried to pay the person in Los Angeles, how much I owe you for the rent, because I was so used to renting. He said, Brother Yanis, this is my old, he's my pastor when I was in the Navy, my youth pastor. He now has a, he has a, big, he has a church, and, and he's like, he like, Brother Yanis, you had a need. Our ministry could fulfill that need. We want the blessing, not your money. Thank God for pastors with that heart. So I go up there, and I'm about to, before I had this church on, the, on this church, I was about to rent the same place. I have the contract I'm about to email I have the Facebook advertising because we have to advertise three weeks before to get a crowd. We had only 40 people show up. Cost me so much money, 700 bucks to rent this place out. Sandy was so expensive for any conference room. How about to say, you know, I'll pay the 700. I don't care. I believe God doesn't send people. I'm about to pay it when my phone rings from San Diego. It was a pastor. Hey, my member finally got through me, one of our church members, and uh, we want you to have your service here. The minute I was about to press the button to send so he goes, we've been praying for something like you're bringing. We've been expecting it. We pray you're the one that's supposed to bring it, and we're going to help you. So every Saturday before I got there, they would go out and hand flyers. They go, Brother Yannis is going to be here to pray for you, but you don't have to wait till then. Let's pray for you right now. Amazing. They use some radio. They use a little bit of television. I walk to that church, don't know what to expect. I call it the walk. When you walk in and you walk to the pulpit, straight to the pulpit, you don't do anything but go straight to the pulpit. You don't know what to expect. So I walk in, the place is packed from wall to wall, 500 plus people. I go and hug the pastor and goes, fine, nice to meet you, Pastor Billy. He goes, it's good to meet you, Dave. And I'm like, it's an amazing church you have. He goes, what? I go, the people. I go, no, no. He goes, the music people and that's, this row right here is your prayer team for the night. I don't know these people. <laughs> I'm like, what? You don't know these people? He goes, no, nah, man, they all came to see you, dude. I'm like, really? Because I told my church not to come tonight because we won't have enough room. God told me not tell you their church, not to come. There will not be enough room. My church will be here in the morning. Are you serious? He goes, 500 people. It's my biggest, um, I don't want to say audience, but biggest response that we've seen in San Diego. But let me tell you what. I went through hell in, in San Diego boot camp. I went there preaching and praying for people, standing for God. When I was stationed in Long Beach, we, we finished in San Diego because they closed our port. They closed our, our, um, the, the naval base, and we moved to San Diego, and I'd walk the streets. I got chased by the Korean mafia because they were trying to kill sailors. But God sent some Marines and some Navy SEALs to get me out. 
I come running down the hill. I'm out there preaching. I'm like, oh, man, I knew I should have went to try to go get Spanish food. <laughs> I went to Old Town. I, I got lost on the way back. And I'm like, oh, well, I just follow the train tracks. But you know what? Train tracks go everywhere. They don't go back to the base like you think they would. <laughs> so, so I'm running. I can see the base, like a little light down the hill. And I'm just jogging down the hill. I'll see headlights following me. I'm like, I'm like 20, 20 years old. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and sure enough, they cut me off in front. And they cut me off behind. And they go, hello, sailor boy. I'm like, oh. And they're going to they're gonna beat me. There was a, a, a bulletin that we're not supposed to leave base without a buddy because of this kind of stuff. And we're supposed to stay out of the place that I'm walking in. I don't remember. I don't know San Diego. I just walk and pray for people. <laughs> so it was a mess. But then all of a sudden, I hear, yeah, it is. It is one of my shipmates that were in class together. We're in the same thing. And his brother's a Navy SEAL. He just pulled, they pull up in a Jeep, and three other Jeeps pull up. And they're Marines coming out. And, the, and then... They go, they go, you got a problem? I go, I think they got a problem. He goes, no, you don't. He goes, take them, he goes, take them back. So I went with my friend in the Jeep, and they drove me off. Sailors and, Mar and SEALs and Marines are standing there. I don't know what happened, but they did find a lot of people injured on the news report. <laughs> so God took care of you, even when you don't know where you're at. So I sowed seeds. I prayed. I know I have a harvest in San Diego. It was the biggest harvest I've seen. I have a harvest in Hawaii. We finished in Hilo. The first time I went to Hawaii, back to preach. We finished in, you know, second time. We finished in Hilo, in the, and that's on the big island. Packed out a church. 500 people in on, on attendance. The pastor's like, who are you? I go, not that who I am. Who is God? Who is God? But he sent me here to pray for the sick. It was one of the best services that we had. A woman got out of a wheelchair. Demon-possessed boy. Nine spirits cast out of him. I prayed for him nine times. And finally he comes up to me. Please, Jesus, heal me. I go, now you're calling on the right one. And I said, be released now. And he hit the ground. And he was completely changed. In fact, I'm walking. He's holding my feet. <laughs> you know, I can't even get him off my feet. I go, you got to go back home. No, I want to stay with you. I don't want to go back home. And so I gave him to the pastor. I go, pastor, please take him over there and counsel him. And the pastor took him. And, and it's amazing to see when expectation is there. But in San Diego, to see that many people, it was easy to do miracles. There was a man there that was just completely hurt in his body, crushed and medicines and everything weren't helping him. He was in complete agony all the time. Prayed for him one time. He came Sunday morning and testified. He has not a pain in his body. A lady got touched in her stomach that she kept jumping up and jumping up till she flew over the altar. And I'm like, we did. She, she landed where the musicians were playing, and they're like all falling over her. And I was like, they had to cover her up because she was becoming undone. <laughs> 27 years with a tumor that would hurt and turn in her stomach. She couldn't eat. God healed her. Expectation. When you expect that God would do something, God will do it. When you expect and you walk into this place, I don't care what the doctor said. I only believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Another report says, nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult for me. In Kings it says, this is but a little thing for the Lord. Amen. God is good. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for the word of God. We thank you that you've shared, Father, the things that you wanted these people to hear to, and to inspire their faith, to create expectation. And, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you that many, 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 many people are being touched online. And miracles are happening right now. Father, we pray for everyone that is watching through this broadcast. We ask you, God, Father, yes, backs are being healed, ears, eyes, even maimed, Father, because we can believe it. It sounds impossible, but Lord, you say in your word, nothing is too difficult. You say in your word, absolutely nothing is too difficult. Father, Jesus said greater things you will do. Father, we believe right now. Healing is happening. Cancer is gone. What's your friend's name again, Mary? Shana. Father, we believe Shauna is healed from stage four right now. That that body is healed and cancer is free from her body right now. Father, we speak life into her body and we believe it done right now. Father, we thank you, God, for your anointing. We thank you, God, Father, she will have the same testimony my friend Melissa shared. That stage four disappeared and gone after we prayed for her. That she had reports from three doctors 
that there is nothing in her body anymore. Father, we believe right now, Lord, just like the man that was healed in Waimea of cancer, God. We believe just like the other man that was healed in Waimea, Father, of three, three parts of cancer in his body, Lord. And Father, we believe right now. In Jesus' name, MS, Parkinson's, Father, scoliosis, psoriasis, Father, and Father, cirrhosis, Father, everything healed right now. Father, you said that you have taken every disease and hung it on a tree. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Father, I feel your presence strongly, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're here to touch everyone online, everyone that has someone they're interceding for, and Father, everyone in this place. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you to Pure Fire School of Ministry, a place where you're going to be inspired in faith and a place where God is going to teach you something that you need to know from the Word of God. I put together several, several ministers, evangelists, uh, pastors, prophets, and we put them together to teach a subject that they are strongly suited for to get it into your spirit and your soul. Um, you can take it online, and you can take it at your own pace. You can take one course, or you can take all the courses. It's completely up to you. And what my goal is, is to inspire your faith through the teachings of great women and men of God, and to make it accessible and affordable. If you go to our school, you'll see that it's affordable for anyone, whatever part of the world you live on, to be able to take it in. And I really believe that Pure Fire School of Ministry will challenge you and get you motivated to do something for God. Hi, this is David Gannis. I want to invite you to one of our healing services. Please visit our website, find out more details. But we have services all over the United States and literally all over the world. We have gone through South Africa, Kenya, India, Mexico, Peru. We are all over the United States, from Los Angeles to Florida, all the way up to Nashville to Wisconsin, all the way down to Texas. We have several services in Texas. Louisiana, we've been there, and we're going back. Nashville, we've been there, and we're going back. Hawaii, we're going back. I want you to go to our website. Find some place that you can get to so we can pray for you. If you can't make it, just believe. Send me a prayer request. I will try my best to answer you. I do text back. I do email back. I do make phone calls back. I do write back. So if you write me personally, call me. I will try my best to get back to you. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching our broadcast. Remember, go to our website to find out more details about our healing services. God bless you. I want you to get my latest book, Igniter of Faith. I tell you what, it will challenge your faith. It will make your faith soar when you hear the stories, the testimonies, but most of all, it'll fill you with the Word of God, which is required to get your miracle. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not around people of believers that know that God does miracles even today, then your miracle may not come to you. But if you're around people that are excited about God, that know the Word of God, and you're constantly having it in front of you, I guarantee you, you're so close to that miracle. Igniter of Faith will help ignite your faith to finally get the miracle that you've been looking for. Great I am. Father, we believe right now that everyone on the internet, do a close up on me, brother, that everyone on the internet right now that is listening and watching, those watching live, those watching on demand, let me tell you what, I recorded my Sid Roth episode in November of 2015. It aired in August of 2016. But you know what? The power of God was still on it. A lady watching that show said she reached to that. She reached to that television the monitor when I was pre preaching in her house, and that God healed her back. There's no time and distance in the work of God. So I'm telling you right now, the anointing of God that's in this place, and many of us are getting gold in our hands. Amen. We're getting gold in our hands. We're seeing people healed instantly. That's going to happen for you right now in Jesus' name. Everyone that is watching this, whether live or whether on demand, we believe that the power of God is on demand in Jesus' name and that you are healed, that your anoint, the anointing is going through these airwaves straight to your device, your computer, wherever you're watching this. And as you lay hands on that screen right now, God is sending this anointing to you in Jesus' name. Cancer, you are gone. Parkinson's, you are gone. MS, you are gone in Jesus' name. HIV, you are gone. Every sexual disease, gone in Jesus' name. I claim healing, and even now I claim salvation. Salvation. If you don't know Jesus right now, I want you to receive him. If you don't know Jesus, say this prayer with me. Father, I love you. I know I am lost, but I know Jesus died for me. 
I want Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I receive him and believe that he is your son and he's been resurrected for me. In Jesus' name, I'm in the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Amen. Uh, Patty? I had hyperextended my knee. It's perfect now. Also, I had tremendous pain in my joint, in my finger, and the finger. No pain. Thank you, Lord. The last list I had, there was quite a few, um, and eight of them were on remission. And so those that remained on my list, now four of those are on remission. One that needed a, a kidney transplant that was just having lots of problems with the new transplant. Doctors don't know, but... Praise the Lord, the transplant that he received accepted his body finally, and he is healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good reports. Thank you. Anybody else want to testify? Yes. Yes, I, my wrist has been extremely painful and swollen for a couple of, like, three or four weeks. Just been praying for it, and David ministered healing, and it's like... 100% better. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I didn't see okay. <laughs> I was praying for something else entirely, but um, I have really loud hearing in this ear, and they didn't even mention that, and I felt it pop, and it's still healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Anybody else? Mm -hmm.